Well, hello guys. Um, welcome to the show. Um, let's see. I keep hearing about budgeting and deficits and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, let's see. Now, Warren Mosler, he says he got the idea uh, for MMT uh, during his uh, experience with the, was it, I think it's a capital assets, capital exchange, something like that. Um, I think it's some to that effect. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you can look it up as far as I put codes, but uh, he also talks about uh, functional finance, uh, a lot of things being uh, related to accounting. And someone actually on Twitter um, kind of like said the difference between macroeconomics and MMT is one is about uh, making, I think making economic, uh, talking about economics while the other one is accounting. And I think MMT, it looks like, I mean, I'm seeing patterns here, uh, that MMT is a combination of the two. It basically just adds functional finance and um, functional finance in a, in a country that's Uh, it's, it's it's I mean, I'm looking at the whole thing like okay, so accounting yeah they had, people and people who do spending they have to go to, I mean Congress of course had to go to CBO um I think it's Congressional Budget Office, and they have to ask uh how much this is going to take how much uh money's going to be spent and all those stuff. Uh, problem is when. I mean, governments are the issuer of the currency. Households, businesses are the users of those currencies, unless you are a uh, a government agency, like a bank, which is which has to, in order to be a a functional bank, has to be insured by by the uh, by the uh, by uh, the Fed. And the Fed uses uh, FDIC corporations as an insurance company for like when you lose something or you, you know, it, it's a way of making sure that that people who deposit their money into your into your bank have an assurance that that the money is not, not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay in your account. It won't be used for anything in regards to that. Um that's at least in my understanding. And in order to be insured by the by the FDIC, you have to be a federal agent of the bank, the a Fed agent. You know, someone who has the permission to to uh, to function as a Fed bank, um, or some to that effect. You know, as you become a part of the federal system in regards to currency, and so. You have and you have regulations to you have to follow, and you have a percentage of reserves you have to keep on hand, and stuff like that. Now that now there is a difference there, because they are, I mean, technically they are issuers of currency through loans, uh, but that loan has to be a, has to be approved, it has, it has to be offset by an asset you own. Whereas and 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 that's a liability for you, but it's a asset for them. At the government level, they're they they're they're not supposed to be making money. They're supposed to be spending it for the greater good of the economy of the people in living in the economy. So, I mean, that's what that does. I mean, they they have to spend a little bit more so that they can function as a government, but otherwise. It's it's supposed to be spending into the economy anyway and safeguarding social safety nets. So security is doesn't have to be you know funded by the FICA tax because a FICA tax doesn't do anything. I mean, one hundred forty seven k goes into it. That's it as far as far as money from your pockets. The rest is the the uh, I guess surplus of that cash does go into U.S. Treasuries that collects interest when interest payments are up as far as up part goes. So for these politicians to say that 
it, they have to spend they, they have to spend taxes that's idiotic i mean if you think about it they don't they have to spend it before they tax it so they're not taxing than spending and i'm i'm thinking well i remember reading the, the the portion of the constitution where it says taxes before spend and then i remember that when uh was it adams i think it was adams who was the inaugural treasurer because she owned a paper mill back in the 1700s i think it was like 1785 or something to that effect they had to issue money <laughs> to people to make the money in order to be able to spend it into the economy in order to be able to tax it back out that's the that's literally i think that's literally how it was done they had to spend it but because it was before i think the timing of it was before the constitution so they had to tax it out so they put down we tax before we spend in reality it's spending before you tax otherwise we would be up the shit creek without a paddle which we're not and as far as the uh the funding of the war well they had to create jobs in order to be able to fund those manufacturing of everything war in regards to like you know planes missiles whatever the fuck um but that but that requires spending so it wasn't taxing it was only taxing afterwards so spending first then because there was because everybody from it had a job or of of legal age of course had a job there's prosperous but they still had to spend on the war itself they still had to spend on the you know manufacturing of the war of the war war stuff I'll just say it that way. It's better for me anyway. But instead of taxing it out, because that would put us in, if they tax too much, that would put us in recession. Uh, instead, they got people to put their money into savings, uh, war bonds, as they, they called it. It was just another way of getting money out of the economy to, to stop inflation from happening. So, and... L. Randall Ray, I remember seeing a uh, recent um, preprint of what the Green New Deal would be. And it takes that same concept from Keynes. Uh, and also for those for those Milton Freemanites out there, he and Milton Freeman literally, I think it was in, uh, was it Fortune? No. Financial Times and The Guardian both had articles in there stating that he was wrong about his money, his theory on money. He was also wrong about his, his theory on corporate profits. So he lived to be 90 in, in the nineties and it wasn't exactly on his deathbed. He wasn't like in bed dying and admit that he was wrong. It was a few years off. But he was wrong about that. Keynes was the closest between the two that, that was right. Point I'm looking at here is when politicians want to tell you that they have the tax before they spend, they're full of BS. It's all about a power. They want to keep power. They want to keep the two-party system in power. So they both say the same damn thing. Taxing, taxing, taxing. That kills every uh, bill that's put forward to help the consumers, help the environment, help other policies. If they would literally say that we spend before we tax and say, they don't have to admit that the that the that the previous economists were wrong, but they could always they could always point out where they were flawed. And to this day, Larry Summers actually doesn't see any negativity of what and he doesn't take anything they said about derivatives back. Even though derivatives, which created uh, the environment to bet on housing mortgages, whether it be you know from people who can't really afford them. But was it were were able to be cleared for them? 
with a mortgage that eventually would have a fixed, which will eventually have a, a fluctuating uh, or floating exchange rate, you know, uh, exchange rate from mortgages, not allowing them to keep those homes, allowing them to be foreclosed, and the bank having to repurchase them. It was all about like fucking with people. It was never about prosperity as far as that part goes. MMT calls for Medicare for all, calls for a uh, Green New Deal, calls for a jobs guarantee, all of which are deflationary overall because it, because it spends and taxes out at some point when things get full capacity. We haven't been at full capacity economically for years, since the 70s. Now it's in, well, before the 70s, really, but manufacturing started going down i mean big time going down and it like we're at 50 percent manufacturing capacity we should be at between 85 to 95 in order to be able to have full as close to full employment we don't have that we want to have that unless we bring a lot of those jobs back here uh, or create new jobs in regards to that. That's another thing about job job guarantee. It could be facilitating new job opportunities for everybody in the private sector. That also creates spending. And guess what? A lot of people would have very little credit burdens because right now this this economy is based on credit burdens, tax li- uh, uh, credit liabilities for the private sector. Anyway. So functional finance, <laughs> I got a little ten uh, rant there. Anyway, so let's see principles of uh, functional finance. Governments had to intervene in a national and global economy. These economies are not self-regulating. So in other words, globally and nationally, which means cities when needed. The principal economic objective of the state should be to ensure a prosperous uh, economy. Money is a creature of the state. I'm guessing, I'm going to be guessing the federal government in regards to that. It has to be managed. Fiscal policy should be directed in light of its impact on the economy, and the budget should be managed accordingly. As balancing revenue and spending is not important, prosperity is important. The amount and pace of government spending should be set in light of the desired level of activity and taxes should be levied in for the economic impact rather than raising revenue. Principles of sound finance apply to individuals. They make sense for individuals, households, and businesses, and non-sovereign governments, such as cities and individual U.S. states, but not but do, but does not apply to governments of sovereign states. Capable of issuing money. Uh, Lerner postulated that government's fiscal policy should be governed by three rules. The government shall maintain a reason a, a reasonable level of demand at all times. If there is too little spending and thus excessive unemployment, the government shall reduce taxes or increase its own spending. If there is too much spending, the government shall prevent inflation by reducing its own expenditures or by increasing taxes. Now, the problem here is there was too, there was a lot of spending, but it wasn't focused spending. It wasn't spending on, like, um, the whole child tax credit, for instance. Um, that and the like, the two thousand dollar stimulus a month uh, that were that were proposed but dropped as soon as Biden got in office. Um, those kind of things, Medicare for all, uh, Green New Deal, those things, those would be focused spending. Those would be creating actual jobs, long lasting jobs. Those are deflationary. Anyway, uh, okay, so by borrowing money when it wishes to raise a rate of interest and by lending money or repaying debt. When it wishes to lower the, the rate of interest, the government shall maintain the rate of interest that induces the optimum amount of investment. Okay, so uh, uh, if either one of the two rules compl- uh, conflicts with principles of sound finance or of balancing the budget or of limiting the national debt so much the worse for these per- per- uh, principles, the government press shall print any money that may be needed to carry out rules one and two. Yeah. Let's see. 
I take a pause here. And this is from the Huffington Post. Um, this is about Larry Summers and kind of like a, I guess you could say a history as far as with him and the Federal Reserve and all those stuff. And let me see if I, oh, shoot. Let me go back up here and kind of show you the derivatives and, st and steroids. Larry Summers merits same fate as A-Rod. Okay, A-Rod. Um, let's see, where did that? Did, 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 did. Oh, this is right there. I had to go back up there and wanted to show you guys that. And did, 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 did. no, wait, back down here. There we go. Okay, back in the late nineties. Yeah, this is obviously a a um a comparison between Summers and A Rod uh, back then when A Rod was up because of steroid use. <laughs> anyway, but the part I wanted to focus on was the Summers thing. Uh, back in the late 1990s, Summers, then Treasury Secretary in the Clinton administration, uh, joined with Fed Chairman Alan Greenspan to demean and silence Brooks Lee Bourne, who I never really heard of until now, who chaired the Com uh, Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Bourne proposed that her uh, agency study the possibility of keeping a greater eye on derivatives, an action that prompted Summers to accuse her of putting global finance at risk. This bit of history has recently came under furious revisionism from excess uh, access journalists willing to let Wall Street finance interest use the, their uh, columns to spew disinformation from the comfort of an anonymity. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, I'm not really I'm sorry. I just don't really care about Arod. Uh, was there anything else to see? Uh, the, the bank executives who oversaw the orgy. Cra uh, orgy crash their stocks options loaded up on uh, beach houses yachts and rare sports cars even as the financial system teetered towards collapse and the uh, economy sank into the worst downturn since the great depression they hung on to their uh, their hoard no one of the consequences surrendered real wealth let alone went to jail though their shenanigans cost tens of millions of people their homes and livelihoods and one of those prime figures is facilitating the fantasy that fueling this destructive boom may yet be given the biggest job of his life, Fed Chairman. I'm guessing this, this is when uh, there's a possibility that Larry Summers would become Fed Chairman. But yeah, and that's why when that was this, uh, when this guy mentions the likes of. Um, uh, Milton Freeman and Larry Summers and Paul Krugman. Who, let me see, where is this? It, yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, where is it? Da, 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 da. okay, now I'm trying to look for that one part. Okay, I'm just gonna, I just look at the whole thing. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Now, Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Krugman explains why he's more left wing than the monetary theory crowd. That's fucking hilarious. MMT supporters are right to call for many for more spending, but they can still be more progressive. Paul Krugman says, "Who thinks interest rates are pretty damn good as far as uh, price uh, control?" Where MMT sees taxes as the best way to slow inflation, Krugman argued that the Fed can do the same. You can lean on the Fed to slow inflation and also allow the government to spend more and keep taxes low, he adds. Well, let's see. Modern monetary theory economists are the trailblazing left-wingers in the field. Nobel laureate Paul Krugman says he's farther left than them. Both schools are inspired by the great 20th century English economist John Maynard Keynes, whose theory of fiscal stimulus influenced not only FDR's response to the Great Depression of the 1930s, but $5 trillion of federal spending amid the coronavirus recession. Krugman was one of the uh, neo-Keynesians uh, who worked to integrate his theories with the neoclassical economy, economy, yeah, economics, of the 1950s and onward, but in recent years, MMT has taken that legacy forward, arguing that since the U.S. is the only paper power that can print U.S. dollars, or in this case, um, markup accounts at the Fed, um, 
the government can spend first without raising cash through taxes. It's never done that anyway. Uh, where the prevailing policy strategy sees budget deficits as a primary obstacle uh, to spending. MMT asserts that inflation is the biggest risk. It's true. Taxes can then be used to slow inflation by reining in the money supply according to the theory. No, actually, that's kind of cutting it. Uh, we believe that taxes will be beneficial when the countries at full capacity when it comes to jobs, health, and other things of that nature. Mostly jobs, as far as as far as job manufacturing, uh, that sort of thing. Not just taking tax out. Taking tax out takes money out of our pockets in the time that we need it. Um, creating jobs creates money to be able to be taxed out in the first place. But to know that taxes don't spend spend for government spending is the main objective in that regard. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, Krugman says policymakers can also rely on the Fed to handle inflation, and that's actually a more progressive uh, economic policy. Actually, it's not because when the only way that I've seen anyway is the Fed handles inflation is by interest rates hikes. Um, during which, if they do that when manufacturing and supply chain is severed for the moment, that creates more price inflation, which creates less money value in the economy, like fresh foods, you know, like meats and stuff like that. That uh, is still up in price uh, because from what I've seen recently, um, quite a bit of meat was not allowed in the, in the country due to packaging errors or uh label uh, uh was it, uh labeling fra uh, labeling mistakes stuff of that nature and that's from like new zealand australia uh i think i even saw a couple from taiwan stuff like that so it's supply chain it's not the fed can't do anything in uh, regards to interest rates interest rates uh they may actually is a uh raising rates when the us has more us treasuries which is a savings account, and the interest payments go to that. That is a fiscal expansion, but it's not much in regards to deficit spending. Uh, that does fuel some spending, but it doesn't fuel as much as direct deficit spending as the stimulus did. Uh, so that's wrong in that regard. What they should have done was keep interest rates at low at zero until uh, manufacturing came back, until supply chain through manufacturing uh, got back up more than fifty percent, and then maybe only use the interest rates as a way of taxing when everything was at full employment, full capacity, and manufacturing supply chain was back up to ninety five percent. I can see interest rates being that because that is a tax on businesses. I can also see it being sanctions being the same thing as far as different countries uh, that that may uh, import we may import from 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 their country that sort of thing you know that that kind of sanction. But we uh, but we have to um, be at more capacity before that even happens. But at the same time. I, would, I myself would prefer, and a lot of MMT years would prefer the interest rates being zero because that does, uh, that 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 is the price setter in the overall economy. So, and I can get this damn thing out. Always, always doing that. Anyway, uh, da -da -da. let's see, MMT years. Okay, wait a minute. MMTers, at least if they're consistent with their own doctrine, are uh, substantially to the right of the people like me. Bullshit. Uh, <laughs> when you sit there and you say that the Fed can use the interest rates as a way of of a price control when there's no when there's no supply chain, you're actually the right to the right of MMTers. In my view, uh, let's see, uh, Dr. The MMTers don't seem to believe that monetary policy can ever be used for anything useful because monetary policies are usually done by monetarists who follow the market and not the economy, what the economy needs. MMT framework existed on the fringe of uh, economic policies from the COVID-19 crisis, but Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen who actually her position lost power uh, in 08 when Benaki 
convince Congress to allow for instead of the Treasury to pay the Fed interest or the Fed, yeah, anyway, took the power away from the Treasury and put it in with the Fed as far as interest payments go. Anyway, um, uh, has said that so long as interest rates stay at historic lows, the government should spend what's necessary to power the economy recovery. That's a sharp reversal from the Obama administration's approach, which was hindered by fears of deficit spending and a growing national debt, which actually that was summers on that regard. And national debt is just a total amount of money that has been spent in the economy without being taxed out. Look at uh, corporate uh, bailouts, look at corporate um, loopholes, stuff of that nature. Uh, if, deficits wor if deficit worries took center stage in 2009, inflation is the biggest risk looming over the pandemic era recovery. One camp led by conservatives and moderate Democrats is concerned that unprecedented spending and the Federal Reserve's low rates can spark the worst inflation crisis since the 1970s. Uh, yeah, no. Inflation inflation happened right now when there's no supply chain. Same thing would happen with the gas and oil crisis in the 70s. That was supply chain because we weren't an we weren't an energy independent country. Uh Obama did give us that, I'll give him that, but Trump decided to turn around and sell it internationally instead of keeping it here where it would have forced um prices of gas and oil down because of the inventories being high. So when inventories are high that forces companies to keep the prices down. So that they don't lose money, and because they're not, no, not they're buying it cheap, so they're able to sell it cheap. Uh, let's see, the other, uh, the other which criminal resides is see, uh, sees inflation cooling once reopening ends and the country sells into a new normal. But while MMTers view taxes as a key weapon for curbing inflation, only if we're at full employment. Krugman believes policy make, policymakers can rely on the Fed to keep prices gr price growth in check. Again, only if we're if we have a full supply chain and manufacturing is up past fifty percent. Neither is neither is possible right now because we don't have the capacity for that. A lot a lot of that is because I think that uh, the trade, um, as in like carpenters and other things of that nature. Uh, I don't think there's many trade schools that teach specifically that. I think that they have become like uh, a minor degree of some kind as some like Harvard or somewhere like that, you know, some to that effect. But I could be wrong about that. One of the people that were uh, working on where I live at, uh, I asked him if he went to a trade school for the job he's doing. He said, no, he, his brother works in that company. And so they got into that and they got taught on the job. So you don't need a trade school if you're being taught on the job, at least not necessarily. Uh, followers of MMT then can be more cautious and less willing to go wholeheartedly into progressive policies than those who appreciate the Fed's power, he added. Actually, majority of the, the progressive policies, they are killed when they say that, they, that taxes will fund them. If they didn't say that, there's a better chance that those policies would be implemented. But nobody wants to. Nobody in Congress wants to, like you know, uh, cut off their own money supply in regards to donors' money, and maybe lobbyist job features. Anyway, uh, da, da, da. while the economy hasn't fully rebounded yet, Krugman sees a, re a repeat of Obama era concerns potentially being the biggest mistake policymakers make during the recovery. President Joe Biden has teed up another $4.1 trillion in spending in, uh, on infrastructure and care uh, programs in recent weeks, as well as several tax increases set to pay for most of the plans, which none of it is paid in, none of it. This is what I'm talking about. Tax increases, they don't pay for spending. Spending pays for tax. That's, this is the kind of crap that... that, that Puts a freaking death nail in these policies. Most of the plans such pay-fors are appealing for those who worry about the budget deficit, but in practice, 
<clears throat> they could keep the recovery from reaching its full potential. Okay, he's he's right about that part. Uh, passing more spending packages while leaving taxes untouched could keep the U.S. from entering a demand-starving recovery that seen after the Great Recession is and added. Again, it all has to be focused spending. That's the that was the problem. With the first uh, spend, it, was, it was the problem with the biggest stimulus we got. I believe it, was, it went it went to everybody. It didn't go to a specific uh, income. Uh, passing more spending packages while leaving taxes. Okay, I've already, I've already read that. The doctor, uh, what the doctor ordered in some sustained moderate deficit spending, he added. That's what worries me a little bit, but I mean, that we're still worried about fiscal responsibility and not sufficiently worried about persisting, persistent weakness of demand. And you know, so he put like a few spins on MMT that's not true. I mean, at least he didn't, you know, outright come out and like talk about like they print money like every two seconds, like the DSA uh, uh, article I read a couple of weeks ago did. Anyway, that's what I got for the moment. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, don't forget to go by to my store and oh, uh, wait a minute, Duh. I almost forgot something. Yeah, and if you want to help grow progressives. Because they are the one of the reasons why I, I still do this. Um, let's see where's that? Uh, da, da, da. Ah, there it goes. You can go here and donate. I'll put the uh, I'll put the donate thing in the uh, in the uh, description box. But you can come over here and you can place five, ten, twenty five, whatever. And let me see if I can find my little thing here. And oh yeah, by the way, uh, Steve Steve is on today, uh, twelve o'clock. So if you want to watch that? Uh, I have raised two hundred, so I've reached my goal. But it's always nice to go past it if you still want to um, help me out on my birthday, which is past, but it's a birthday uh, fundraiser for the month. <clears throat> Um, please do so and either donate here or donate directly to uh, Real Progressives by going right here. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say as far as that part goes. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you learned something. I hope I was able to teach you something. Uh, but yeah, never listen to Paul Krugman who never listened to Larry Summers. And listen to the Mike Norman, listen to the Steve Grumbines, listen to the Warren Moser, listen, listen to the uh, Steffi Kelton. They all get it right. It's not tabs, it's stabs as far as that part goes, which means it's spending, taxing, and borrowing versus taxing and borrowing and spending. There we go. It's the first one, not the second one. I'll just say that. I'm, I don't, I'm not even sure we borrow. How can you borrow your own money in regards to that? But whatever. Peace out for now, and thanks for listening and watching. Talk to you tomorrow, possibly.